Okay, we're going to start a new topic, which is to look at solving quadratic equations. Now we're going to use some previously learned knowledge on factorising expressions like difference to squares and trinomials to help us to solve these things called quadratic equations. Okay, so first of all, let's have a wee think about what a quadratic is. Well, a quadratic, when it's graphed, has got a parabolic shape. We call that a parabola. So it can be concave down, U-shaped, or it can be concave up, upside down, U-shaped. Now, the graphing of a curve that looks like a parabola arises when we've got expressions with x squared in them. So, when you've got an expression like y equals 3x plus 5 or y equals 5x minus 2, when you draw them, you get straight lines. But when you introduce this x squared term, what that does is it creates this parabolic shape. And we call that a quadratic expression. And therefore the parabola is the graph of the quadratic expression. Now, to solve a quadratic equation, is to find where it has a zero value. Now, the value of the function is given by where it is vertically on the curve. Okay, so we would say that on the graph, if we're at the x-axis, we've got a zero value. And if we're above the x-axis, then it's a positive value. And below the x-axis, then it's got a negative value. So if we think, for example, if we had a straight line, well, that straight line has got a zero value here on the x-axis. Well, if we had a parabola, like so, then the zero value occurs here and here. Okay, so we're just going to mark them in. Now, those points are called roots, and that's R double O T S. So let's take that down. Roots are points where the parabola. cuts the x-axis and the curve has a zero value. Another important point to take down is when we solve a quadratic equation We want to identify the roots. Okay, so we need to find out where these points are on the parabola, and that's what solving a quadratic equation will do for us. Now, important to remember is that we've done quite a lot of work on factorising quadratic expressions. So that might have been a quadratic expression, which was a trinomial. Or it might have been one where, for example, it was difference to squares or other types. Let's just remember some key skills that we learned there, which was the first one, which is you always take a highest common factor first. Then you look for difference of two squares. 
and then you look for whether it's a trinomial, and that's when it's got three terms, and it might be a combination of all of these, in which case you always look to take out the highest common factor first where possible. Okay, so let's just get into trying some questions then. Let's solve some quadratic equations. So we're going to solve the quadratic equation x squared minus 7x equals 0. Okay, now that's a quadratic expression. And it's this x squared here which will give me that parabolic shape, that quadratic shape. Now, if that's a quadratic expression, then this is a quadratic equation because it's got the quadratic element to it and it's got an equal sign, so that is a quadratic equation. Okay. Now, what I'm interested in is solving this equation to find where the things equal to zero, and that means that I'm looking to find the roots where the curve cuts the x-axis, and that's where it's got a zero value. Okay. Now, to do so, I then go back to some of the things that I've learned with factorising, which is highest common factor, difference of two squares, where that's included, a trinomial or a combination of those. Okay, the first thing is, well, this is not a trinomial. It's not got three terms. Now, it's definitely not a difference of two squares here. There's a difference of a square but not two squares, so it's not difference two squares. Therefore, that's just a highest common factor question. So in terms of the factorising, that's really easy. That was simple stuff that we did quite a while back. We just take out a highest common factor. Okay. So the common factor there is x. The highest common factor is x. x times what gives me x squared, that would be x. And then x times what gives me 7. X, that would be 7, so it's x bracket x minus 7. And if you think about it, if it was to expand that out, x times x was x squared, and x times minus 7 is minus 7x, and that's equal to 0. Now, what we've got now is something multiplied by something is equal to 0. Okay, so what's, what could be true then? Well, if you think about if a times b equals 0, then what could be true then? is a could be 0, b could be 0, or both could be equal to 0. So if, for example, a was 0, and say b was some other random number, like 7, then 0 times 7 would give me 0. Let's say b was 0 and a was 9, 9 times 0 would be 0. And let's say both would be 0, then 0 times 0 is still 0. So these three things could be true. So what we know could be true here is that, well, this times this is equal to zero, so that could be zero, the x, so let's write that down, or the x minus seven could be zero, and let's write that down. Okay, well if x is zero, x is zero, but then x minus 7 is equal to 0, that means I've got x equals 7. And then that's a very simple, very, very simple quadratic equation that I've just solved. And I've found the roots to be 0 and 7. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that we've got a root at 0 and we've got a root at 7. So the curve might look a bit like that. But the important thing that we definitely know is that there's a root at 0 and there's a root at 7. And remember that a root is where it cuts the x-axis. OK, so let's try and get some momentum going with these ones. So let's try this one. Let's solve x squared plus 10x equals 0. Well, that's just a highest common factor question. So the highest common factor there is x can't take it numerically other than 1, so it's just 1x. Okay, so that's then x bracket x plus 10. Since x times x is x squared, and x times 10 is 10x, and that's equal to 0. So that could mean the, that 0 or that 0. So something times something is equal to 0, which means the first thing could be 0, or the second thing could be 0. So x could be 0, x plus 10 could be 0. 
Well, if x is 0, x is 0. That's as far as I can go with that one. And if x plus 10 is equal to 0, then x would be minus 10. And that's me solved the quadratic equation. But let's just think about what that might look like. Well, a root at 0 and a root at minus 10. Now, the important thing to note here is we're not actually been asked to sketch the curve here, but I'm just doing that as an extra bit at the end to show you that that x equals 0 and that x equals minus 10, that's what it means. That means we're looking at the roots and we've identified where the roots are. Okay, okay let's do an example 3. Okay, example 3, and this time we've got x squared minus 17x equals 0. Okay, what factorising options are open to me? Well, is that a difference of two squares? Well, there's a difference and a square, but that's not a squared term. So it's not a difference of two squares, it's just highest common factor. x bracket x minus 17 equals 0. Something multiplied by something is equal to 0. So the first thing could be 0, or the second thing could be 0. Okay, so I've got x equals 0 and x equals 17. Okay, so what might that look like then? Well, a root at 0 and a root at 17. Okay, let's try one more simple one. Let's go for t squared plus 11t equals 0. Don't worry about changing up the letter. That's not a big deal. We can use different letters to identify. Okay, so t squared plus 11t is equal to 0. So it's just common factor again. Highest common factor, t bracket t plus 11. Since t times t is t squared, and t times 11 is 11t. Okay, so t could be 0, or t plus 11 could be 0. Where's that coming from again? Well, something times something is equal to 0. So the first thing could be 0, and the second thing could be 0. Okay, so t equals 0, t equals minus 11. And what might that look like? Well, a root at 0 and a root at minus 11. 11. Okay, let's try an example 5. We're going to solve 3x squared minus 12x equals 0. Okay, so that's still just highest common factor. But maybe I can take a wee bit more this time than just um, an algebraic element. So, numerically, I can take, I really want to take as much as possible, so from 3 and 12 I can take 3, but from x squared and x I can take x, so 3x. Okay, so I then like to build this up, so 3x times what gives me 3x squared, well that would be x, and 3x times what gives me 12x, and that would be 4, and there's a minus in the middle, is equal to 0. Okay, so that times that could be 0, so the first thing could be 0, 3x could be 0, and the second thing could be 0, x minus 4 could be 0. Okay, let's just carry this through then, bring the 3 down, divide, 0 divided by 3, that's 0, take that over, change the sign, that's 4, okay. And what may that look like this time? Well, a root at 0 and a root at 4. It may look like that. Okay, example 6. Okay, example 6. We're going to solve 5x squared plus 60x is equal to 0. Okay, take out the highest common factor. From 5 and 60, I can take 5, but I can take more than that. I want to take as much as possible. And from x squared and x, I can take x, so I can take out the highest common factor of 5x. Then look to build it up. 5x times what gives me 5x squared, that would be x. And 5x times what gives me 60x, well, 5, 12, so 60, so that would be 12. Let's just check, is that right? If 
5x times x, 5x squared, 5x times 12 is 60x. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that times that could be 0. So the first thing could be 0, 5x could be 0. Or the second thing could be 0, x plus 12 could be 0. Okay, then bring the 5 down, divide. 0 divided by 5, x equals 0. Bring that over, x equals minus 12, and the roots are 0 and minus 12, and that may look like that. So as we can see, a root at minus 12 and a root at 0. Okay, let's try one more. Let's go for 3x squared plus 7x is equal to 0. Maybe a wee bit more awkward, this one. Okay, from 3 and 7... Right, I'm not going to make much progress there, but I can take out algebraically a common factor of x. So that would be x bracket. Let's build it up. So x times what gives me 3x squared? Well, that would be 3x. And x times what gives me 7x? Well, that would be 7. x bracket 3x plus 7. Let's just go over that again. Okay, from 3 and 7, I can't take anything bigger than 1, so it would just be the 1 there. Okay, from x squared and x, I can take x, I can take 1, x out as my common factor. x times what gives me 3x squared, that would be 3x, and x times what gives me 7x, that would be 7. Okay, so this times this equals 0, so the first thing could be 0, and the second thing could be 0. Okay, so the 7 goes across, becomes minus 7. And then remember that I bring the 3 down and divide, and that would give me x equals minus 7 over 3. Now you might be tempted to try and put that in a calculator, or write as a decimal number, but just leave it as minus 7 over 3. It's a fraction, it's an exact value, it's okay. Okay, so that might look then like well, I've written 0, minus 7 over 3, so that's between minus 2 and minus 3. And it might look something like that.